In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a website from start to finish with the hosting or website builder. I'll show you how to use AI to generate text, images, and pages, how to create a contact form, how to add a blog, how to do SEO, and more. Before you can build your website, you'll need a web hosting account from Hostinger. To do this, head over to hostinger.com slash made or click the link in the description. Hostinger was kind enough to sponsor this video, and you can get an extra discount during their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale using my link. Hostinger has a few plans to choose from, but I'd recommend going for the business plan since you get all the features of the website builder like AI-powered SEO tools and e-commerce capability. You can also host up to 100 websites on the business plan, including WordPress websites. If you want to know how to build a WordPress site from start to finish on Hostinger, I made a comprehensive series that I'll have linked below. Once you've decided on a plan, click Choose Plan and work through the setup process. I would recommend purchasing a 48-month account for the best discount, and you get a free domain for the first year with an annual plan or higher. And don't forget to use my promo code CRAILERMADE for the best price. It's pre-applied if you used the link below. Below, but if you're not seeing the promo code, you can enter it here. After completing the checkout, you'll be taken to the hosting or dashboard and it's going to ask you a few questions. This website is for myself. I'll click next. I'd like to create a website. And here you can choose between WordPress and the hosting or website builder. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the hosting or website builder. Now, you can claim your free domain if you purchased an annual account, or if you're not sure what you want that domain to be yet, you can just click Use Temporary Domain. You can use the AI wizard to build a website for you, or you can choose from some pre-made templates to modify. I'm going to show you how both work, starting with the AI wizard. Select your website type from the dropdown and enter your brand name and a description. You can also choose to personalize the site further with your color palette, or you can let AI surprise you. And in this case, I've tried adding my color requests in my prompt for the description. Click create a website and within a minute, you'll have a customized AI generated website with personalized copy and images. And just like that, the AI has generated our website and I'd say it did a pretty good job. I see it caught my prompt here requesting to use the color orange and I requested blue as well. So right here, we've got orange and blue. The images and the copy are all applicable to the branding and everything that I gave it in the prompt. This is pretty impressive. So right away, you could choose to edit the site and modify it using everything I'm gonna show you in this video. But I also wanna go back and show you how you would select a pre-made template. So back on the previous screen, I'm gonna click where it says use pre-made templates. Here we can explore a bunch of different options and you'll notice that some of the templates have this personalized with AI badge. This is essentially a middle ground where you can select the template that you want for your website, but you can still use AI to customize the copy and images. I like the way this template looks and if you wanna see if a template may be right for you, you can click this preview button and view all of the pages for the template. So I can scroll the home page. I can click the about page. I can go through everything and just get a feel for all the layouts in this template. This looks good, so I'm gonna click start building. I'll leave the same prompts that I used last time and I'll click personalize template. While you wait for your site to generate, now would be a great time to hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and click the bell and you'll be the first to know about new videos. When your site is ready, you can preview the content that AI generated. When you're ready to start editing, just click this edit site button. Before we dive into editing the site, I want to briefly cover the tools available in the hosting or website builder. In the left sidebar, first we have the site setup checklist. This can be useful when you're launching a brand new site to work through some important items before going live. Next, we have the add elements tab and you can just drag and drop an element anywhere to add it. Under that is pages and navigation, which lets you set up the structure of your menu. You'll notice that the home page is in the hidden from navigation section, and that's because you can click the logo on the left side of the menu, which is currently covered up by the sidebar, and that will take you directly to the home page. But if you'd like the home page to be on the menu, you can just click and drag it into the active section. And let's move this to right here. And you'll see now we have a home page item on our menu. You can also access some page settings here, such as the page URL, password protection, and social image. If you want your website to have a coming soon page as you build it, just flip this toggle right here. 
Keep in mind that the coming soon page won't be visible until you initially publish your site by clicking the go live button. Next in the sidebar is the website styles tab. Here you can access global styling options like colors, fonts, buttons, and animations. If you update your brand with new colors, you can simply update the colors here and all elements that reference those colors will be automatically updated. Next are the AI tools. Here you can generate text, images, pages, sections, and more. I'll cover a few of these tools later in the video. Under that, we have the online store tab, but I'm not going to cover e-commerce in this video. Finally, we have more settings. Here you can access the blog and appointments feature, general settings, analytics, SEO settings, and more. When you're ready to start editing your site, simply click an element to reveal the settings. Here we have the settings bar, I can click edit text and make my changes, or you can also double click on a text layer to get straight to that editing UI. The same thing applies to images. I can single click an image and then click edit image, or I can double click an image and get straight to the image settings. Within any element settings, you'll have additional tabs to fine tune things. I've got a style tab, I can adjust the corner radius and opacity, action if I wanted to hyperlink my image, shape if I wanted to apply a shape mask to my image, and animation if I wanted to have my image fade or slide up on page load. If you want to resize an image, just click it and drag it by the corners. You can also put an element anywhere you'd like on the page, but you'll notice that by default it snaps to a grid. It's also snapping to other elements, so I can align this with the corners of this image, or I can center it with this text layer. And if you want to disable snapping, you can click the section and go to edit section, layout, and you have independent controls for snap to guides and snap to elements. If I just disable snap to guides, there won't be a grid anymore, but you'll see that it's still snapping to the edges of elements. If I want to move things around 100% freely, I can disable both. And then you'll see I can put my image wherever I want down to the pixel and the downside, I guess, is that it's not going to align things automatically for you, but you may enjoy that extra control of placing it exactly where you want. If you want to move multiple elements at the same time, you can click and drag with your mouse to highlight the desired elements. Then you can click and move all of them as a group. Now, a quick note about disabling the snapping, you have to do this on a per section basis. So I've disabled it for this section, but if I go to the section below and I go to those settings, you'll see that it's still enabled for this one. You can also change the stacking order of an element by right clicking it and using these controls. Bring to front, move forward, send to back, send backwards. So if I click send to back, you'll see that this image is now on top of the star or I can bring this back to the front by clicking bring to front. If I want to add a new element, I'll go to the add element tab, click my desired element and drag it where I want. I can put it anywhere in the section and you'll notice that if I move it lower, the section automatically expands to accommodate the design. If you need to adjust the section height manually, you can do that by clicking the section height arrow. You can increase or decrease the height. You can also add new sections by using the add section button in the desired area. This will give you the option to add a blank section, choose a pre-made one from a template, or generate a section with AI. I'm going to enter a prompt to create a section about our client satisfaction guarantee. The section already looks great, but if you want to modify the background image or color of a section, just click edit section and you can do that here. You can change the image, adjust the opacity, or choose a color instead. Adding a new page works much the same way. Just go over to the Pages and Navigation tab and click Add Page, and here you can select from a pre-made page, generating a page with AI, or creating an empty page. I like to work smarter, not harder, so I'm always an advocate for using AI or pre-made templates and modifying the page from there to make it your own. As you get comfortable building your site's pages, the next thing you may want to do is modify your site's header and footer. You can do this from any page. Just click your header and click the edit header button. Here you can access your layout options, elements, logo, and style for the header, buttons, and social icons. With this particular template, the sticky header option is toggled, which just means that the header is going to stick to the top of the page as you scroll. 
You may have not realized that this is enabled because as we scroll in the editor, it's not stuck to the top of the page. But to see how this looks on the live website, just click the preview button and you'll see exactly how that behavior works. You can also add a sticky bar to your header for announcements, and this could be useful for sales or other time-sensitive information. When you're wrapped up with the header, let's go take a look at the footer. Scroll down to the bottom of any page, and the footer works like any other section, only the footer is going to be automatically applied to the bottom of every page. So I can drag elements around, I can add new elements, I can modify things just like in any other section, but it's automatically gonna sync to all pages. If you want to hide your footer on a specific page, just click the hide icon and select hide on this page. Another thing you'll likely want to add to your website is a contact form. The pre-made template I'm using already has a contact page and it's got a contact form on it, but this is just the default contact form that you get when you drag the contact form block onto any page. To edit the form, just click it and click the edit form button. You can modify the form name and change the email where form submissions are sent. You can also view form submissions in a database, so if you lost one of the emails that was sent to you, you can still see a history of everyone who's tried to get in contact with you. Under the Fields tab, you can add new fields, and you can choose between short answer, paragraph, single choice, and multi-choice. And within each field, you can choose whether it's required or not. I'm pretty happy with the fields that are present, so I'm probably just going to change this to first name for clarification and I'll leave first name required and last name optional. And you can also adjust the button, some styling options, and what the message is when they submit the form. Maybe I'll say, thank you, your message has been received. And finally, you can adjust some style options for the form field, submit button, and background, as well as any animation on the form. At this point, you may be finished building your pages, but what if you want to add a blog to your website? To do this, head over to More Settings and Blog and click Start a Blog. This creates a new blog page and navigation item, and there's also a new blog tab in the sidebar. You can edit posts just like pages, adding sections and elements as desired. However, each blog post has a post header, and this contains your blog post title, description, date published, and how long it will take to read. You can edit the information that shows up here by editing the blog header. You can choose to hide things that you don't want it to show, and you can also adjust the styling of the header in general. You can edit the post header from any post, and it will sync to all blog posts, just like your website's main header and footer. You can also create new blog posts with AI by providing a tone of voice, length of content, and blog post description. To edit a post's title and social image, click the three dots next to a post and go to Post Settings. Here you can access General Settings, the Featured Image for Social Media, and Post Categories. Now that your pages and blog posts are ready, let's do some SEO. Go to More Settings and SEO Settings, and here you can fine-tune SEO settings for each page. You can use AI to generate SEO information for each page, but manual adjustments may still be necessary to adhere to best practices. Each page has its own SEO title and meta description. The SEO title is the hyperlink that appears on search engines, and the meta description appears underneath. You can edit that manually by scrolling down, and each post also needs to have a focus key phrase. You should pick a key phrase you want to rank for, and you'll need to repeat it in your SEO title and meta description. The website builder gives us tips on how to optimize each page, and as you can see here, my meta description should include the focus key phrase, and currently it doesn't. So maybe I'll just change this to contact, and we've resolved that issue. And then under there, the page URL should contain the focus key phrase. So let's change this to contact Krayler travel. We've resolved that. And it's recommending at least 300 words for this page. Currently, it's only 46. Also, only one out of four images have alt text. So to add alt text to images, go over to your page and click the image, click edit image. And here's where you can add the alt text. So this must have been the one of four images that has it. Your alt text should just be a description of the image that helps search engines better understand what's on the page. 
So let me go to this image and I will say uh, star icon. And what else is on the page? Maybe it's counting this as an image here. Uh, Krayler travel logo. And that can't be an, oh, that is an image. Okay, that's our fourth image. Maybe uh, horizontal line. I am not sure how I would describe that. Okay, so now if I go back to SEO for contact, that should no longer be, no, it's still counting that. So there must be an image somewhere else that I missed. Ah, it's this one right here. Yep, horizontal line. So the one in the footer, I guess, did not count. Go to SEO settings, and I no longer see that feedback, so that's great. It's also recommending that we only use one H1 heading on this page. It's either missing an H1 heading or has multiple. Let's figure out what's going on there. Is this, okay, this is heading two, so we can change this to heading one. That's massive, but I can adjust the font size to be a bit smaller with it still being H1. And this shouldn't be H1, I don't think. Nope, that's H3, cool. So let's see, go back to our settings. And you'll see that now this has a green check mark and before it was the caution symbol. So our contact page is ready to go. Your website is almost ready for launch, but before advertising it to the world, there are two final things we need to do. First, take some time to optimize your website for mobile devices. These days, a significant amount of traffic comes from mobile, so it's worth the extra effort to make sure your website looks its best on smaller screens. In the editor, click the mobile phone icon to view the responsive version of each page. If everything looks good, you don't need to do anything, but if something looks off, you can click the section and try clicking the auto fix layout button, and this will reorder things to optimize it for mobile. You can also manually reorder items and place them exactly where you want them to show up in the mobile view. And if there's an item that just doesn't need to be on the mobile version, you can click it and click the hide icon and choose to disable it on mobile. After optimizing your pages for mobile, the final step is to click the connect domain button. If you purchased a year or longer hosting plan, you can claim your free domain here. Otherwise, you'll be given the option to purchase a domain from Hostinger. If you already own a domain name elsewhere, you can enter that here as well, and Hostinger will give you the name servers that you need to point your domain to. Once that's done, click the Go Live button if you haven't already, and your website is officially live. If you need additional help as you're building your website, give the Ask AI widget a try. It's pretty helpful, but if it's not able to answer your questions, you can also reach out to Hostinger's 24-7 support. Also, while the Hostinger website builder is simple and intuitive, it's not as powerful as WordPress. But the good news is, you can add WordPress websites to your Hostinger account at no additional cost. If you're interested in how to build a WordPress website from start to finish with Hostinger, check out my comprehensive series here.